Kia is on an upward trajectory at the moment. What was once a budget car maker is now a brand that has its sights set on giving the likes of Audi, Mercedes and BMW a run for their money. And I don't think anything symbolises their transformation quite as much as this, the new Kia Sorento. It's been comprehensively updated for 2021, adding in a whole lot of premiumness for, relatively speaking, not a lot of money. We're among the first to get behind the wheel of it in the UK, and we're looking to see whether it can give its German seven-seater rivals a bit of a headache. Even though it's a Kia, the new Sorento is a pretty glitzy looking thing. Coming to think of it, it's much shinier than pretty much all of its rivals. And there's a reason for that. You see, the Sorento is hugely popular in the US, considerably more than it is in Europe. So you tend to have a design that's a little bit more appealing to the US market. For instance, you've got a lot of shiny metals around the grille and overall, the car looks pretty aggressive. Dare I say, the taillights actually look a bit like that of the Ford Mustang. There are three different trim levels to choose from when picking a new Sorento. It starts off with the two, which is just under 39,000 pounds. Then above that is the three, which is just over 41,000. And at the top is the four, which comes in at 47,000 pounds. Go for the two and you get an eight inch infotainment screen, which actually connects up with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And what's really neat about it is that you have physical button shortcuts. The only downside is, is that it's not a particularly nice looking system because if you were to go for the three or the four, you get a 10.25 inch system, which is more modern and much slicker. What comes as standard across all models though, is a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. I can't believe it comes as standard on the cheapest model, but it completely transforms the feel of the car. It's so intuitive to use. Flicking through the menus is nice and simple, and it's also very easy to find the information that you're after, like your MPG or your sat nav. In terms of quality, you have a really nice interior here. I really like the way that this is designed. I feel like a lot of cars are really over-designed at the moment, whereas this feels like it stands out, it's a new look, but it's not gonna be offensive on the eyes. I think it looks very, very nice. There's a nice mix of physical buttons and touch elements as well. So the climate control is all done through physical buttons and dials, whereas the touchscreen infotainment system, if you get the 10.25 inch panel, is all done through touch. We've got soft touch surfaces on top of the dashboard. You've got a nice leather steering wheel and there's a bit of piano black on here, which is just gonna build up fingerprints, but it does look pretty nice. Plastics in general aren't too bad, but you've got some cheaper ones around here on the center console and also on the doors, but it's all in areas that you're not really going to touch. Storage is pretty good too. You've got two decent cup holders down here. We've also got a nice big bin under the armrest with a little tray as well to store keys in. Uh, and there's also a little area down here that in higher models is a wireless charger, but not in the two. With all three rows in place, you've got 179 litres of storage. But if you fold down the rearmost seats, you get 813 litres. Now, to put that into context, that's a little bit more than a Peugeot 5008, but also a little bit less than what you get on an Audi Q7. Of course, you can fold down the middle row as well, and that'll open up 1,996 litres. The new Sorento is a little bit longer than the outgoing model, and that actually translates really nicely into the back. So I've got the seat in my driving position, and I've got loads of space still to play with. So you could have somebody that's way over six foot sat in here, uh, and you would have no problems back here at all. Uh, I'm 180 centimeters, and in terms of headroom, yeah, I've got loads to play with. So again, those of you six foot and over will be absolutely fine back here. Uh, now, despite some models coming with all-wheel drive, there's actually no real transmission bump down here. There's a slight raise in the floor, but nothing to get concerned about. If there is no one sat here, then you can pull this armrest down. And even in this model, the two, you still have cup holders back here. Isofix points are located within the seat, so you've got to feel around for them, but they are there. Uh, and in terms of connectivity, I really like what Kia's done here. There are two USB ports here, and they're actually integrated into the back of the seats. There's also a third USB port down here, so all three of you back here could charge up. Uh, and if someone's a little bit different, you also have a 12 volt charger as well. 
At launch, the Sorento comes with two engine options. The main unit that's available with all trim models is a 1.6-litre petrol hybrid engine developing a combined output of 226 bhp and 350 newton meters of torque. A PHEV that'll allow you to manually switch to electric power is on the cards too, but it won't arrive in Europe until next year. Alongside the petrol hybrid is a 2.2-litre diesel unit developing 199 bhp and 440 newton meters of torque. This one is also available with a new 8-speed dual-clutch gearbox, while the hybrid comes with a 6-speed auto. So the car we were just walking around was the Sorento 2, the cheapest one available. Uh, we're right now in the Sorento 3, and this morning I was driving the 4 in hybrid form. Having come out of the hybrid this morning, it's probably best to compare the two engines now. The diesel is only available in 3 form, and I think you've got to really want the diesel to go for it. Yes, you're going to get a little bit more mileage out of it, but the hybrid is still pretty frugal. To be fair, we would need the car a little bit longer to give you an accurate readout on MPG. This is just a first drive day. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to have the car in a little bit longer and tell you which one is more frugal. They're both very smooth engines. The diesel can be a little rattly when you're idling and also when you put your foot down it's quite evidently a diesel but pretty much as soon as you're on the move and cruising on a motorway it's very very quiet and very refined. The same goes for the hybrid however obviously when you pull away it's very very quiet. Just to note though that the hybrid isn't a plug-in hybrid it's what Kia calls a self-charging hybrid which basically means it's a more traditional hybrid. You don't plug it in, you can't switch it into electric mode and drive it on electric power alone. It basically gives you electric power when you need it, so like setting off or getting away from a set of traffic lights, or if you're cruising at low speeds, then the electric motor will kick in. And when it's not on electric power, it'll work in tandem to eke out a little bit more fuel. There will be a plug-in hybrid variant arriving next year where you'll be able to drive on electric power alone. I would say the standout feature of this new Sorento though is just how refined it is. It's incredibly quiet and calm in the cabin which is exactly what you want from a car like this because bear in mind being a seven seater this is probably going to be used as a bit of a family wagon and if you're doing a if you're coming from up north and you're going to Cornwall for the weekend and you're putting in an eight hour long trip you're going to want it to be a nice relaxing place to be and that's exactly what the Sorento is. What I also really like and what brings the Sorento really close to its German rivals, in fact in some areas I think it surpasses it, is in terms of technology. Kia's really got its own vibe about it and we've got the 10.25 inch touchscreen display in this model and it's so wonderful to use and it's got a nice bit of colour to it as well so you're getting in a car that you think is a relative appliance, it's a Kia and it's a seven seater but I like that Kia is putting the effort into making it feel like it is one. You feel like you're buying something that's high tech and I think what reflects that the most is the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster that comes standard on all cars. Now that's a big deal because on a lot of German cars that's a £2,000 optional extra. In this it's free. Yes the car is quite expensive at pretty much £40,000 for most models Yes, that's expensive for a Kia, but the amount of kit that you're getting included as standard is very impressive. Another thing I like is the blind spot detection system. So usually in most cars, a blind spot detection system is if you indicate to overtake something or change lanes, you'll get a little indicator in your wing mirror saying that there's something in your blind spot. You get that in this, but you also get two little cameras that appear on the digital instrument cluster. So if you indicate left, you get a camera in your left blind spot. And if you indicate right, you get a camera for your right blind spot. It's a really clever system and I've not seen any other car do it. So can it live with its German rivals? Well, yeah, I think it can. I don't think the interior quality is quite as good as what you get on maybe something like an Audi or a BMW. However, you get a lot of tech as standard and the tech really does feel cutting edge. It feels just as good as the systems that you'll get on more expensive cars. If it was my money, I think I would go for the 3 with a hybrid engine because I don't really think 
you need to go for the four to get the best experience. It's quite a jump going from the two to the three because you get leather seats instead of cloth and you also get the bigger touchscreen infotainment system and you still have all the semi-autonomous kit that you could want to prevent you from crashing into stuff on the motorway. We'll have to have it in a bit longer to say definitively which drivetrain is the best to go for, but after this first drive, I can say that the new Sorento is really impressive and German cars really need to watch out.